Okay. All righty. I think we've been working on this thing for what, about three weeks now or four weeks, something like that. Since the last time you saw us, we got it all mounted up. We got the wheels on it. We roll it around real nice. This is a tank inside here. It's a 16 gallon polypropylene tank. And we'll show you that in a minute. We'll get some features on close ups. But inside there, I got a, uh, what's called the Fluid Master toilet float. Or an ordinary toilet float. And what that does is the, the, the water stays permanently connected and it's on. And as you use the water below the level, it turns on and fills it back up again. I don't have to mess with it, it's already filling. Of course, this is the gauge glass. It's half, half full right now. Main pressure gauge. Got a whistle back there. This is the turret with the Mercer safety valve on here we're going to be testing. Got different connections for it. Main turret shut off. Uh, we have an only camp injector feeds in here. And then down here, we have um, a pump, uh, basically a Van Brocklin design pump. I don't know what size it is, but it's just a temporary pump to pump water in. And then later on, down the line, I'm going to put a duplex, horizontal duplex pump in there. A couple of, believe it or not, stainless steel pans I had laying around. We put those in there, and it drains, of course. And uh, we got our burner in there, and we got an old uh, auxiliary um, uh, monofold over here to hook up different things that runs off of the main switch here. So now once you once you set it up and you got that tweaked into where you want it to pump, you can just control it from here. And the same thing with the water. I got the water sitting up here, so I don't have to reach over. I can look over there. Okay, I need water in the injector. Open the water for the injector, and then just open the injector. And uh, now I have two shutoffs for the safety valves, so when you test them, they got to be it's got to be shut off, so you can adjust them, then turn it back on. I got gauges right here, and these might have to be moved because they're right at the right at on the same pipe. So what I've noticed that is they're on exactly the same pipe. They jump. They don't. You know, that's, of course, that's on the air. It might work differently. Else. Anyway, we made this. Back to this. We made a stack here got a, uh, a whistle valve here made by Loco Parts and I'm going to give you a nice thing about Loco Parts. I've had this whistle valve for four years and every time I use it and I blow the whistle for the first time it blows down the boiler. No matter how many times I've tried to fix it, it still does the same thing. I've tried to return it and never got it returned. Never, never was able to get my money for it. So what we did, I'm going to use it. I got a valve on it. I just turn the valve and turn it off when it leaks. I just turn it off. So that's for testing whistles, any kind of whistles. We got a main safety valve back here. I got a kunkel back here um, that was going to be set for 150. So we're going to run the boiler on 150. The the um, safe, the small safety valves will be set at 120, 125, 130. So we want this a little bit higher. And uh, we're about ready to test the gas. We haven't tested this. We know nothing how it's going to work. We have no idea. So we're going to find out. This is the tank we bought off the internet. It's a 16-gallon tank. I'll see if I get a shot of it. The, there it is in there. It's the regular toilet float you can buy at the Home Depot. Okay. Down here and below, you can see it right there. That's a fitting for the for the water. And then underneath, I'll bring it down here. You can see that's a toilet valve there, just a shut off, extra shut off. And over here, that's the yellow. The yellow is the gas control. And then this green here, green for water, yellow for gas, is for the, um, the fittings, all stainless steel by the way, fittings for the, this is the injector, the tall one. That one's the injector. And this one's for the pump. This one here's for the pump or whatever else. Over here, that is basically to fill the boiler and will be the blowdown. It comes on the very bottom of the boiler. This is the pump we were talking about. It's a pump that we're using on the two inch scale, but we're going to use it on here right now to test it. Now up in here, this is a just an extra fitting. I can test anything I want. I can hook up whatever I want to hook up there. Shut off now. This is where the pump goes in. It's a shut off for the pump, and there's of course a check valve there. Here's my little little manifold. 
the little manifold we made up. And then of course this is the the gauge glass. Commercial gauge glass, no dinky dupe stuff here. And that's a what's called a um, that's a PM research valve on the bottom, that's the blowdown. Properly blow down. Of course this is the firebox if you wanted to use it. You might be able to see the burner in there, yeah. You can basically barely see the burner in there. You'll see it when we light it up. And of course, if you wanted to run off coal, this is where the ashes would go. We have nothing on the bottom to catch it because we don't need it. This is the check, the, the, the safety, or the, I'm sorry, the uh, main pressure gauge. Someday I'll make a little round uh, cover, like a flare thing on there out of brass if I get time. And of course, this is the stack. We made the top of the stack. With this piece right here on the very top was a piece of a, a top of a fence post that I cut off the point. And we rolled that out of steel and made it made it up. And there's a um, a ring around the top of the inside of the boiler that acts as a dry pipe, and it comes out right out of here, and of course goes to the manifold here. This is the just a test manifold. There's this conical valve over there. We got the top off because we're going to set it. And there's the two Mercer safety valves we're going to be checking. All right, uh, put the top on, so you can see we have. I made a little top for it out of this piece of formica we had, and that acts as a lid, of course, and then a little place where I can put tools on here to work on the safety valve and sit here and uh, do what I got to do. Okay, so now what we're going to be doing is we're going to purge the gas lines and fire it up and see what happens. So hopefully everything will work fine. Okay, but well, we lit it off. Let me see what time it is. Uh, it is 12, 127, say 130, and we'll see what happens. See how long it takes. I'm going to take it slow because, you know, first time, better to take it slower and warm everything up. But as I start to feel it getting warmer, then I'll jack it up a little bit. But this is really cool, man. I always wanted to make one of these because. You know, you need it for testing things. I mean, things test good on air, but they act a little differently on steam. And if I'm going to be selling safety valves, I have to have a good source of steam approximately the size of the boilers that are going to be used. So that's the way I look at it. I don't know what other people use to test their valves, but I just thought that this would be the best way. I'm glad I was able to find this boiler. It really was a great find. And uh, looks like it's going to work out pretty good so far. We'll see. Find out when we get it fired up. See how much time has elapsed here. Ten minutes. Ten minutes have elapsed, and I've got ten pounds of pressure ready. So that's good. That's good. Unbelievable. Everything getting hot. Looks good. Uh, got a couple of minor leaks. We're not going to worry about right now because maybe when the steam gets on it, the heat gets everything gets up to to uh, temperature when it's working, the working temperature, those things might seal off. If they don't, you can make a note of them, of it somewhere, and then when it's blown down, it's all cooled off, you can tighten those, take a half a turn on each fitting. But uh, I'm excited, man. It's starting to look good. Can't wait. Got one leak right there. Probably going to get worse. Maybe we should fix that now. Yeah, I think we're going to turn that, tighten that. Let's do it. Okay, yeah. Uh, I'm blowing a whistle for you. With the whistle valve that leaks. Alright, it's been about roughly 45 minutes. We're up to, we got the main safety valve set. It's raising right now. We just tested the pump. I'll run it for you a little bit so you can hear it. I think that the lines are a little bit restricted, but it does pump good. We raised the water level two inches in maybe a minute. 
The injector works good. I'll run that for you. Open the water. Valve's right here. I raise right up half an inch already. You gotta have gloves to run this. And of course, this is the safety valves. Tap them all back up. That's the Mercer valve running off there. There's two of them. They said, you know, set at 120, so they're going to drop the pressure down to 120. There's one right there, just uh, this one. This one's still going. That one's got to be set yet. The blow down's got to be set. Now let's see if she goes off again. Should pop. I just haven't adjusted them yet. Just fooling with them. Yep, uh, jumping up to 130. It's just starting to pop, probably a little higher than it needs to be. So you gotta just tweak them down. You take the quarter inch, wherever that is, and the 3 16 loosen the top nut, and then just open this a little bit. Keep working until you get it to where you want it. Water's working beautiful. Just beautiful. Probably went, right now it's under 100 pounds. So now if I go around here and I open the, the uh, gas valve burner, probably hear a little louder now. By the way, when we're done, you can see a need for having a the burner control up here with like some kind of graduations on it because I could actually control the pressure from that. So now it's raising up. I can actually control the pressure by changing the pressure, of course, the heat, more heat, the quicker it's going to come up. But it hasn't been using very much water at all. It's incredible. Of course, we're not using steam much. We're just sitting here kind of percolating. Now it's raising up. Let's see. Let's see what happens when I raise it up a little bit higher. All right now I raised it up a little bit higher, so I have the highs I had the burner going. Now it's raising up. Uh-oh. Okay, you're on top of the camera. <laughs> what are you going to do now? Go home and cook spaghetti? Raising up, raising up. Raising up. Okay, here we go. It's going 120, 120. This one will probably go off. Raising up. I probably got this one set a little higher than that other one. Well, jumping up to 140, the main safety valve is going to go up at 150. Let's see where the 160 valve will go. I can actually control the pressure by just changing that burner a little bit. There she goes. That's the main one. Just let it go off. Really go off.
could actually see how they kind of pump it. I can see the ground, the, the needle jumping. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting tight and they need a little never sees on them. Okay, uh, a couple minor problems, nothing serious. Uh, I wanted to show you how to blow down the gauge glass, but the boiler has been used in years, so there's a lot of crap in there, and it got into the threads of the of the bottom blowdown. But we, we were able to blow it down somewhat, but not the proper way. I wanted to show you the proper way of doing that, but um, uh, it did clean the glass out, and it's a lot better now. Right now, we're hovering around 140. Perfect boiler. Perfect. If I turn these on because they're set at 120, they're going to go off. So if I let them go, they're going to go off and relieve the pressure to 120. But you can see what's happening is the gauge is dropping. So that means that they're capable of relieving the boiler like they should. Even one of them is going it. But that's almost set now. As soon as I shut that, the pressure starts raising immediately. I can almost control it from that yellow valve down there. Like I said, I'm going to bring up a, something up here and have a little way to set it, you know. Anyway, I think that's it for now. We're going to blow it down a little while. I think it's been a success. We've got a few minor tweaking to do. i got to get better gauges. These gauges here are really not good enough for this job. So what I want to do is get a really good calibrated gauge, spend the bucks and get it calibrated so I know it's right on, dead on, and what it should be. That way I can test these a little bit more carefully. And I really don't need the, the, the gauges here. I can just use the main gauge right there. So all I'll do is I'll get a better gauge that has more increments on it, two, two pound increment, two to five pound increment, so I can get them set properly. But uh, I deem this boiler a success. So uh, thanks for watching the videos, and uh, hope you enjoy it. Uh, a little bit of stationary steam today. See you again next video. Thanks for watching.